Hey, it's Florida Boy back with you. You know, I was doing some online shopping the other day and I was browsing around some other supplies and some nice shiny new survival items and some, some nice shiny new packs and everything. And I started thinking, you know, what do you really need to survive? If you really, really had to survive, there's only four or five things that you really, really need. Let's look at them now. Hey, welcome back. If you're new here, hey, how's it going? If you like what you see, please remember to subscribe and click the bell icon below so that you don't miss anything. All right, let's start the discussion. You know, all of the nice Pathfinder kits and stainless steel survival kits and prepackaged survival kits on eBay and, uh, you know, wh wherever you see them, they're all really, really nice. Uh, but if you don't have the knowledge to survive, and you don't have the will to survive. You're not going to be able to survive. Knowledge is key. Knowledge is key. Knowledge is key. All right, get it? You have to have the knowledge to survive. If you don't have the knowledge to survive or the will to survive, you're not going to survive. Uh, first thing is you got to sit down and you got to take a breath and you got to take stock of where you are and you got to take stock of what the weather conditions are and take stock of what your surroundings are. You have to use the best organ in your body, your brain, and think about what to do next. Okay, remember the old rule of threes? Uh, what is it? Three minutes of severe bleeding, no oxygen, or icy water, and you're dead. Uh, three hours of severe weather conditions without shelter and you're dead three days without water and you're dead three weeks without food and you're dead hopefully we're out of our surroundings before the three weeks comes along but you know the severe bleeding or oxygen that that, that goes without saying but three hours without shelter if you're in the rain or you're in the snow or you're in a really really harsh weather condition you got to get some shelter and there's a myriad of things that you can use for shelter. One is probably the easiest and best thing and what most people already have around. They got an ordinary trash bag. This is a huge 50 gallon, one of those huge 50 gallon hefties. And believe me, if I unfold this thing, it's giant. You can put it over you, use it as a raincoat. You can split one side or two sides and it, it'll almost be as big as a five by seven tarp. Okay, so here's one thing you should never be without uh, is a trash bag if you want to step up just a little bit further. Here's my old rain poncho. Okay, here's what it looks like uh, all stretched out making a couple of poncho shelters. That's what a good rain poncho shelter looks like, all right? If you want to step up just a little bit further, here's the old Outdoor Products 5x7 tarp. I haven't even got a chance to review this yet, but I got this at Walmart for like 10 bucks. Here's what these look like in some shelter examples. Okay, these are nice to have, but what happens if all you can find is a piece of shit tarp laying on the ground? This is a $3 uh, 5x7 tarp that I got from Harbor Freight. A little camouflage that I use for the underlayment of my tent. It's all ripped up, but hey, it'll work. What happens if all you can find is a, is a hunk of junk tarp and a hunk of rope? You got a shelter, okay? There you go. That's from the, from the picture at the front of the video. Here's shelter. Let's go on to the next item. Item number two is water. You have to have water to survive, okay? You can't survive any more than, you know, three days without water. In the heat of Florida, after about eight or ten hours or twelve hours, you're sweated out. There's a real risk 
of heat stroke uh, and you know there's also a risk of hypothermia in Florida uh, and, and it's very easy to get hypothermia in Florida but heat stroke is our major risk you gotta have water uh, here's a cheap and easy kit everybody recognizes this okay this is my Nalgene Oasis canteen here's my canteen cup with my canteen cup stove okay all goes in a nice little kit I could get it back together okay all goes in a nice little kit and then we put it in the cover okay this is about 20 bucks it doesn't have to be the giant shiny Pathfinder editions nothing against Pathfinder but you don't have to spend a lot of money the the military sets you know have the Alice clip so you can clip it on your belt or an Alice belt and they have a nice little pouch in the front that you can carry either some matches which we're going to talk about in a few minutes or more importantly water purification tablets chlorine dioxide tablets okay you can't drink unfiltered water from the swamp it's going to do worse things to your gut and it's going to do worse things to you than not drinking any water at all but water is the first key here's how we keep it here's how we collect it now let's move on to the next item fire okay everybody loves those videos of starting a fire rubbing two sticks together and doing the bow drill method and everything else you can try that if you want to but I don't think you're gonna have time to do a bow drill method one of your best ways uh, to start a fire and to carry with you all the time is this cheap simple ferro rod this is a cheap camelus ferro rod that I got in a kit for twenty dollars with two other items at Walmart Sometimes I use my Harbor Freight fire starter. It was even cheaper. It was five dollars. You've seen me start a fire with a magnifying glass, okay? But this is probably your easiest and best uh, route. So there you go. Try a magnifying glass. Carry a ferro rod. If you don't have a ferro rod, here's my old Zippo lighter. Zippo lighter is great. What happens if it runs out of fuel? You can still spark it, okay? It'll still throw a spark. If you can, carry a, a little container of matches. Here's the old container of safety matches and windproof matches. I got a little dryer lint under the top, and it's got a striker on the side. If you can, carry all of them. If you can't, carry as many redundant fire starting systems as you can. It's only going to help. You gotta have that shelter. You gotta have that water. You gotta have that fire to keep you warm and also to help purify the water. Okay? You can bring it to a boil. Uh, it'd be, you get shelter, you get water, you get fire. Now you can start thinking about number four on the list, which is food. Let's go to that. Okay. Now you got some shelter. Now you got some water. Now you got some fire. Now you gotta get some food. Always carry at least a power bar or something with you. Always, 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 always. Never, ever, 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 ever go out without anything. Okay? Picture in the front, got some little oatmeals. You know, you get some boiling water, you got some oatmeal. At least you got something. You know, one of my top four survival foods is the good old ramen noodles. You might not like them, but it'll keep your ass alive. And without food and water and shelter, you're going to be going away like this. That's right. They're going to come and get your ass in a body bag. Last but not least, one item that's going to help with all of these other items that I put out in this video is a good knife. Here's my old number one, Buck Special number 119. Goes on my side everywhere. This isn't the latest and greatest knife, but it'll damn sure get you through in a survival situation. So, if you're going to spend any money, spend the majority of your money on a good quality knife. Okay? Remember, shelter, water, fire, food, and use your support knife. To help with all of those other four but most importantly 
Use your head in a survival situation. Knowledge is the key. Let's not go out on a body bag. Remember, in the left-hand side, you're going to see some suggested videos. In the upper right-hand corner, you're going to see my subscription box. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Remember, I answer all comments. And until next time, this is Matt, the old Florida boy, saying, I will see you on the trail.